A damaged motor or ESC will cripple your quad. But how do you know if the motor or ESC is messed up or if it's something else that's making your quad fly bad? And if it is messed up, how do you know which one it is? There's a clear sign in black box that something is defective and which motor or ESC is defective. And today I'm going to show you what it is using a real world example. Sometimes the symptoms of a damaged motor or ESC are obvious. The most obvious one is what some people call a death roll. Death roll means that the quadcopter just starts spinning and crashes into the ground. A death roll happens when, usually when a motor is at idle and then suddenly has to speed up like at the end of a flip or roll. As the quadcopter is rolling to one direction, two of the motors are at idle, two of the motors are at high speed, the quadcopter rotates that way, and then at the end, the idling motors have to spin up really quickly to arrest the motion suddenly, and that's one of the hardest things you can ask a motor to do is to go from change speeds rapidly. If there's anything wrong with them, that's when you'll get the death roll. If you get a death roll, diagnosing the problem is actually pretty easy. Whichever arm of the quadcopter dips first is the motor or ESC that's having the problem. So if the quadcopter consistently dips to the front left, the front left arm uh, motor or ESC is having a problem. But oftentimes, a bad motor or ESC can have more subtle effects. You see, a quadcopter is only as powerful or fast as its weakest motor or ESC. And here's why that is. Imagine you've got a quadcopter that's hovering flat. All of the motors need to be making balanced thrust. Otherwise, the quadcopter won't hover flat. It'll roll to the left, roll to the right, pitch forward or pitch back. Now imagine that you've got a quadcopter with a defective motor that can only make 75% thrust. And you, from a flat hover, you punch the throttle and you do a full throttle punch out. What's going to happen is that all of the motors will accelerate. Well, they'll they'll, they'll, they'll uh, go faster RPMs. And as that one motor peaks out, the other motors will continue to go up. And the quadcopter will start to tip towards the motor that is damaged or defective and making less thrust. Uh, but we've got a PID controller here and the PID controller is trying to make the quadcopter do what it's commanded to do. And right now what it's being commanded to do is stay flat. So the PID controller will bring back down the non-defective motors to the level of the defective motor to keep the quadcopter flat hover or flying straight or whatever. The bottom line is that the quadcopter, the PID controller will not let the quadcopter make more thrust than the weakest motor when that motor maxes out. Whenever any motor maxes out, the whole quadcopter comes down to that level. Let's take a look now at this real world example of a quadcopter with a defective motor. Let's watch that again at 50% speed. And what I want you to see is that when you really jam the throttle, there's a moment where the quadcopter suddenly tips toward the bad motor. It's pretty subtle though. Here's a case where we raise the throttle a little slower and smoother and that kind of twitch to the left doesn't really happen because the motors are able to stay in sync. The, the, the good motors don't outrun the defective one. And now here's just some regular flying and kind of, kind of want you to take from this is the quadcopter is not obviously defective except when you do just a full throttle drag race and you just see that it's flying way slower than it ought to. The pilot was like, no, something isn't right, but it's not like super obvious that something's broke here. As we get to the black box, I do want to remind you that I have a black box 101 playlist where I take you from from the very basics all the way up through more advanced analysis. There's a lot of stuff I'm going to go through quickly or skim over here. And if you want to get a full sort of course on how to use black box, go check out the black box 101 playlist down in the video description. What we're looking at here are the motor outputs, motors one, two, three and four. And what I want you to see is as here's the throttle, right? Throttle. These are the two sticks. As the throttle goes up, what do we see happening? 
Now, notice in these scenarios that the one of the motors is maxing out. Now, this is motor number one, is the red line. That's the back left motor. And it is maxing out. But that's not necessarily a problem because it's always going to be the case that one motor maxes out before the others, especially if you're not hovering flat or but you're turning. Like if you're turning left with normal motor direction, this motor is going to be controlling the roll axis and the yaw axis. It's normal if you were turning left that that motor would max out first. Now we see here that we're turning to the right. So that's a little suspicious already. Because if you're rolling to the right and yawing to the right, the left two motors should be spinning faster and the right two motors should be spinning slower. Think about it. That doesn't make sense, but I think it probably does. As we continue to look through here, we can see that motor number one is just repeatedly maxing out. And this is really cool. Look what happens here as the throttle goes up. Remember what I described the PID controller doing? You can totally see it right now. In fact, let's zoom in just a little bit to make it more obvious. Notice that as the throttle goes up, all of the motors begin to speed up. But then as motor number one maxes out, all of the other motors suddenly, ooh, they slow down. That's the pig controller trying to balance the thrust between these motors. Motor number one maxes out. And notice that the sticks are relatively centered here, right? Again, if we were making a sharp right turn or left turn, we would expect maybe that motor number one would max out, but we're not. The motors should be relatively balanced when the uh, when the sticks are centered. And the fact that motor number one is so dramatically off from the others tells us that something is wrong with motor number one. Let's just keep looking through here. You'll see more examples of this. Just every time we throttle up, motor number one is the first one to max out. Now, if the hypothesis is that motor number one is defective, then why do we see motor number one making like more thrust, more RPMs? Why is it maxing out? And the answer to that is that it's not. It's not. It's actually making less. The, the motor signals that we're looking at here are what the flight controller is asking of the motor, not what the motor is actually doing. So, for example, imagine that you had an old car and the motor was on the way out and you're trying to get up a hill right? And you kind of push on the accelerator pedal and the car struggles to get up the hill. What are you going to do? You're going to push the pedal down further. And eventually, if that kept happening, you'd have the car floored and the motor would be going, bleh, 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 but the pedal's floored. But that's what you're asking the car to do, not what it's actually doing. So in black box, when you see a motor go to 100%, it either means the, the throttle is pegged and the motor is legit going to 100% or it means the motor is making less thrust or maybe even no thrust at all. When you get a desync and the motor just stops making thrust entirely, you'll see the, the, the throttle signal, the motor output in black box go to 100% every time. In that case, it means that the motor is probably defective. And especially when you see one motor making being at a much higher throttle value than all the others that can indicate the motor is defective. So what we got here is a really clear indication in black box that motor number one is defective and it is limiting the overall power and speed of the quadcopter as a whole. The next question that you're probably going to ask is how different does it have to be before there's a problem? And the answer is that's that depends. Now you can see right here that motor number one is at 100% and the other motors are at about 50% except motor number four is at 36% for whatever reason. That's way too far. I, in general, I think uh, you probably want to see about in a flat hover, one of the motors will go to 100% whichever one just happens by the odds of manufacturing variance, whichever motor happens to make the least thrust is going to end up at 100%. The other motors are going to end up maybe at 85 or 90%. That I would consider to be within normal bounds. And you may be surprised to hear that, but there's a lot of variation in manufacturing. There's a lot of aerodynamic inconsistencies. So the motors are not all going to make the exact same amount of thrust, even under ideal circumstances. Uh, so I'd say more than about 15%, 15, you know, 85% with one, one, one motor hits 100%. If any of the other motors is below 85-ish percent, I would be, you know, question that. Um, 
if they're below, let's say 70%, that's certainly like, wow, something is up. And you're probably going to notice it when you're flying the quad too. The question then becomes, what do you do if you run into this problem? Uh, and the answer is you replace the motor with the ESC. Don't throw it out. Just desolder it, put a fresh one on. By the way, I recommend you always buy five motors and five ESCs anytime you buy them. So you always have a spare when you need it. Uh, if you don't have a spare, just swap two of them and see if the problem moves. If you swap two of them and the problem moves, then you know the motor was the problem. But if you swap two motors and the problem stays, then the ESC is probably the problem since that didn't move. Um, the other thing that you're now going to start thinking about, perhaps a few of you, is how do we get the thrust of the motors to be more balanced so that we can get more thrust out of the quadcopter as a whole? If you think about it, when the quad is pitched forward, the rear motors are having to spin faster to make, to make uh, enough thrust, and that is limiting the overall power of the quadcopter because the front motors aren't spinning as fast as they could. So if you could find a way to give the rear motors cleaner air, in theory, you would get more thrust out of the quadcopter as a whole. And there, if you ever see frames where the rear motors are mounted higher than the, than the front motors, that's something that they're trying to do. Uh, that's also why tilt rotor quadcopters, I'm, I'm not sure if, what the benefit is there, I mean, there's all kinds of reasons why tilt rotors may or may not be a good idea. But if you think about it, as the rotors tilt, eventually the rear ones are completely seeing uh, turbulent air from the front ones. And that's that's maybe not ideal. So anyway, there you go. Now you know how to recognize a bad motor or ESC in black box using this real world example. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you've got any questions, put them down in the comments. I read all the comments and I try to answer as many as I can. Um, thank you guys very much. Happy flying.